Good afternoon, all. I'd like to call to order the um, a special meeting for the Affordable Housing Program, AHP. Will the clerk take the roll call? President Lewis Jordan. Here. Secretary William McCurdy. Present. Treasurer Fred Heron. Present. Director Marissa Brown. Present. Director Nancy Bruni. Director Kerry Cox. Present. Director Richard Churchill. Director Michael Disman. Here. Director Tick Siegerblum. And Director Luciana Turner. Present. The quorum is present. This meeting has been properly noticed and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you. Um, the next item is our public comment. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium and give your name for the record. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time single speakers are given um, may be limited. Public comment that is uh, repetitive, repetitious, slanderous, offensive, and inflammatory amounts to personal attacks or infers interferes with the right of other speakers is not allowed. Any person who acts in the violation of these rules will be excused for the remainder of the meeting. Any public comments regarding items on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll go on to item number three, which is the approval of AHP resolution AHP 34. And I'd like to have uh, Director Fred Heron present this, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Uh, today we're asking the board to approve resolution AHP 34 authorizing the executive director and the chief administrator or the chief administrative officer to sign all uh, required documents to pay off Senator Richard Brown loan held by Fannie Mae and serviced by Sun America uh, Partners. Um, I, there is a co correction. The, the, the corrected amount is two million six hundred and seventy thousand six hundred and forty two dollars and nineteen cents. Um, on, this um, Senator Richard Bryan was a project that was developed back in two, around 2007, and it was completed in two phases: a phase one and a phase two. Phase two, phase one loan became due um, March 1st, 2024. Um, at that time, prior back in January, we had some discussion with um, Fannie Mae to see if they would extend the loan um, another year and a half. Um, um, so to, 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 to actually come due the same time the phase two loan would be. Um, do as well, and the, the, uh, what we decided to do was we wanted to syndicate both of those loans, combine those two loans together, together, and syndicate both of those loans. Um, Fannie Fannie Mae agreed to, or well, didn't agree to extend it for a year and a half, but they did agree to extend it another 90 days, which would make the loan come due um, June 1st, 2024. And uh, at that time, they asked us to provide another lender if we wanted to have that loan extended um, for additional period. Um, we reached out to um, a company um, and to see if we get a loan commitment letter. We did receive a loan commitment letter um, from that organization. Um, after reviewing that loan commitment letter, it wasn't uh, feasible for us to engage in that company to re refinance a loan. Um, we met amongst ourselves and felt that it was best that we actually become the, the lender of, the, of that loan. So we asked asking the board to approve this amount. Um, uh, the six two point six million two two point six hundred seventy two thousand um, dollars. We would keep the same terms of the loan. I think the interest rate is around seven point two percent interest rate. Uh, and this would generate about a hundred hundred ninety thousand off of interest to the non federal pup, not not our non federal program, uh, which we're going to use the money to pay off the loan. Currently, we have about a little little more than eight point five million dollars in our non federal uh, deserve account. And we are asking the board to uh, give us the authorization to approve this loan. Any questions? Any questions at all? Let the record show that Commissioner Sager, Director Sager Bloom, has joined us. Thank you. It's kind of lonely up there. I was. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions regarding the, the uh, presentation? If there are no questions. I move approval. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. So there's been a motion to approve. approve. By Director Brown, second by Director Disman. All in favor? Aye. Any, op any opposed? Any abstention? 
Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is citizen participation. Items raised under the portion of the agenda cannot be deliberated or acted upon by the directors of AHP until notice provision of the open meetings law have been um, complied with. If you wish to speak on matters on or off the agenda, please step up to the podium, clarify, and clearly state your name and address. In consideration of others, avoid uh, repetition and limit your comments to more than no more than three minutes. To ensure all persons equal opportunity to speak, each subject matter will be limited to 12, 12 minutes. As a courtesy, we would also ask, we would also ask that um, the no one's speaking, the not, not speaking to be seated and interrupted the speaker or the director. Seeing no public comment, this meeting's adjourned. Thank you. All right, we'll go ahead and call to order the meeting of the uh, Southern Valley Regional Housing Authority. And we'll ask that you stand for pledge and allegiance to our flag. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. This is a, uh, we're now going to roll call. Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Vice Chairperson Tick Siegerblum. Present. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Present. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Commissioner Carrie Cox. Commissioner, Present. Commissioner Richard Churchill. Commissioner Michael Disman. Commissioner Luciana Turner. You do me a favor. A quorum is present. The meeting has been properly noticed, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. All right, thank you so much. We'll now move on uh, to public comment. Is there anyone here wishing to testify in public comment? This is time reserved for items that are listed on the agenda. If you do have comments on items that are listed on the agenda, we actually come forward at this time, state your name, address for the record. We ask that you also limit your comments to three minutes and keep your comments um, to the items and respectful. Anyone looking to come forward at this time? Hearing CNN, we'll move on to item number three, approval of the minutes. Is there a motion for approval of the board minutes on March 28, 2024? We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Disman. Is there a second? Second, second by Commissioner Sagerbloom. Is there any? Conversation on those on that motion. Hearing say no, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Let the reflect the record see that it's approved unanimously. I will now move on to item number four: approval of the agenda. Right. We have a motion by Vice Chair Sagerblom. Is there a second? We have a second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any discussion on that motion for approval of the agenda? Hearing saying none, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is approved unanimously. We'll now move on to section two, item five. Good afternoon, all. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to um, start off my presentation with a bittersweet moment. Um, Commissioner Valerie Craig contacted me last month and said for health reasons she would no longer be able to um, serve out her duties on the board. Um, Commissioner Craig has moved back to the Midwest to be with her family, and I think we have them on, we have them on the, uh, the, the, the um, Zoom call right now, and we just wanted to, wanted to have you join me in recognizing and thanking Commissioner Craig for all of her contributions, um, not only as a board member, but as a, as a resident. You know, joining the board back in March of 2021, and uh, coming in and, and being a staunch, a staunch advocate for affordable housing, and particularly the rights of those who lives in, live in, in affordable housing. And so, um, we've got a, uh, a few items that we'd like to virtually present to her and her family, and um, we'd like to start with um, a proclamation from the county board that we received. So I'm assuming, Tommy, should, should I stand over by the, I want to make sure I'm in camera.
coming from the county board where Commissioner Sager Bloom is the chair and Commissioner uh, McCurdy is the vice chair. And this is a, uh, a proclamation thanking um, Valerie Craig, Ms. Craig, for all of her hard work and contributions to the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. I say it also makes today Valerie Craig Day in Clark County. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Uh, so to the family, uh, we thank you for uh, sharing uh, Commissioner Craig with us for over the last few years. Uh, as uh, Director Jordan stated, she's been a staunch advocate for residents, for affordable housing, as well as for everyone uh, within our community. And she is someone that also kept us on track uh, when also when times that we got off track. So we thank you for sharing her uh, with us. And we are honored to recognize her in Clark County or for with the proclamation uh, proclaiming today as Valerie Craig Day in Clark County on behalf of the 2.4 million residents that we represent. Uh, we thank you and um, we, we, we wish her luck in her next journey. And we also have a proclamation from the city of Las Vegas, which is also proclaiming today as Valerie Craig Day. The city of North Las Vegas would also not like to acknowledge Ms. Craig for her contributions. And uh, finally from, the, uh, from Henderson, the city of Henderson also acknowledges uh, Ms. Craig for her contributions. I'd like to now open it up to see if each one of the commissioners would like to add a, a comment or uh, a tribute. Uh, we'll start. I see Commissioner Cox has her hand up. Thank you. I just want to say how grateful I am to Commissioner Craig for her spirit and how strong of a voice and an advocate that she was and I'm sure continues to be for those that needed her. And I just always love hearing her input. And what she had to say really helped me think about some of the things that she um, was concerned about. And she's a, she's a wonderful um, commissioner. And I just wanted to thank the family and thank her for all of her, all of her service. And I do miss her. Thank you. Commissioner Turner. You're on mute. You're on mute, Commissioner. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to say it was indeed a pleasure and an honor to both um, Ms. Craig. Commissioner Craig was on it. She didn't give no air, and I really appreciate the work the approach situations. It was skeptical, critical, analytical, and very verbal. And so I just thank God for, you know, having the moment in my life to know her. And um, she had just been melted in my heart. I just called her A.T. A.T. Commissioner Craig. So <laughs> appreciate it. Thank you for sharing her beautiful life with us. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Brown. I just want to thank uh, Commissioner Craig for being one of the board members to um, accept me onto the board and be believing that I will be an asset to uh, the board here and to also thank her for um, the inspiring words and all that she has contributed to um, our community and it's been a pleasure to work with her. Thank you. Commissioner Desmond. Well, I'd just like to make a couple of remarks. Um, as the family knows, I was a very, very close personal friend as well as a colleague of Valerie's, and I love to antagonize her because I would remind her all the time that everybody in the meeting was tired and ready to go home, and here she come with 10 other questions, and, and I'd, say, I'd say, now, if you get in a fight with these folks, I'm not going to fight with you. Now, you can forget that. And she would always go, she didn't care. She was fighting for the people, and she had a tremendous amount of experience, and a lot of persons overlooked the amount of experience and involvement that Valerie has had in her lifetime. 
She was a real trooper and real fighter, and I was just so honored and pleased to have both a professional and a colleague relationship with her. She's just a great person, and I deeply, and I know all of us are, are going to miss her tremendously. Thank you. Thank you. I would just add that um, if you look at where we are today compared to where we were when she came on, uh, I think that's really a tribute to her role in this process because this agency is 100% different than what it was when I came here. And it's just so rewarding to, to see us going forward and making progress and, and being something we can really be proud of. And Valerie, you really made that possible. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And then finally from the uh, staff and residents here at the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Um, this award is in recognition of your compassion to all residents and dedication to the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. We are truly a better agency because of you. And this is to Commissioner Craig as well. I, I know the family is on and, and if there's someone, including Commissioner Craig, who would like to make a comment, please take this time to do it. Okay, well, I wanted to also acknowledge um, Tina Ford, who's the property manager over at Jamestown, who helped to arrange getting the family together again. It was for health reasons that uh, Commissioner had to move on. So uh, we just want you all to know that we have you in our thoughts and prayers. We really appreciate the opportunity. I see Joy. Joy, would you like to say something? Joy's Commissioner Craig's daughter. Okay, you don't need it, Joy. Let's see if we can unmute you here. She's unmuted. Joy, if you can speak up, we can't hear you. Still muted, yeah. Well, John, we'll, it seems like we're having a little technical technical difficulties. Uh, we'll make sure that a, a copy of this video, as well as all of the proclamations and acknowledgments, are um, are gotten to you and your family. Um, and again, we just want to thank Commissioner for her contributions, but also thank the family. When uh, when citizens, you know, you know, endeavor in 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 dealing with any public work. We know how much it takes away from family. And so to, to your mom and to all of your family here at the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, we thank you for, um, for the, the years of contribution. Thank you. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do, um, uh, Rhonda Miller. Rhonda's been, uh, wanna wave at us, Rhonda? Rhonda's uh, given a lot of time to us here at the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Uh, she works in uh, eligibility. Dewanda Campbell, would you like to come up and say a few words? And I also want to acknowledge the entire eligibility team. You all wave your hands. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're truly coming and saying goodbye as uh, you know, Rhonda looks at going into the next phase of her life. So Rhonda has been with SNARA, what, 20 years? A little over 20 years. I've only had the pleasure of um, being in her company um, only about a little less than two years, but I can honestly say Rhonda exemplifies what I want in an employee. Her passion and how she treats our applicants, especially the way she fights and sometimes fights me <laughs> for her vets. It just shows that what this organization has, has taught her and how she, how she sh just rolls that over to our applicants. Um, I'm trying not to get teared up. Who's 
she, she did. She worked with me into this department, and I just hope that upon her leaving, that she has left with her cohorts the passion and how she treats our applicants, because we know coming into this organization, we are the face. We are the first ones people come from the wait list. We are what they believe the housing authority represents. And if they encounter Rhonda on their first entry, then she makes the rest of us look good. So I thank you for your service, Rhonda. I, I don't have any too many stories that I want to share, but I just want to say I truly, truly thank you, and I thank you for your service. And we all at the Eligibility Department truly appreciate you. Okay. Rhonda, we have a little something for you here. We'll let you start. Now is your time to say. Thanks, Tawanda. Um, golly, you know, thank God for Toastmasters in Montana, because I did learn to public speak, but this is a tough one. It's difficult. It's um, exciting. I started here as a temp from Apple One Agency and made packets for Section 8 landlords. Went on to be uh, an eligibility specialist, an occupancy specialist, and couldn't wait to get back to the eligibility, the gatekeepers as we call ourselves. Passion absolutely is the HUD VASH program with the veterans. I'm sad to see that going completely virtual because it does take away from the one-on-one -on -one contact, helping these folks understand the program, get all their documents in. But it will muddle through that, or you guys will muddle through it and make it happen for them. Um, the only thing I, I can say is not only have I enjoyed the experience of learning and helping people, but the lifetime friends that I have met. <laughs> and you all know who you are. <laughs> uh, real quickly, I, I woke up this morning and I thought, golly, I hope I don't have to say anything because I'm, I'm not great about that, especially if I'm teary-eyed. But there's a Donna Fargo song called I'm the Happiest Girl in the USA. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but thank you again for the memories and the friendships and the opportunity to help so many people in our community. It's just been a real blessing. Appreciate it. And so a couple things we'd like to present this to you. And for a picture's sake, we'd like to have you stand over here. Maybe the commissioners come behind her. Um, while we're in the, in the spirit of just recognition, commissioners, I wanted to acknowledge uh, about seven or eight of our team members that uh, took a long drive up to Mesquite um, this week. Um, but it's, I, I commend the county board members for your long reach in Clark County. Uh, some of the staff, including eligibility, um, resident services, voucher program, um, inspections we went up to um, to a uh, grand opening of a, uh, a 60 unit senior property in Mesquite where the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority donated 25 project-based vouchers and so it was uh, it was quite quite the event uh, staff got an opportunity to really see on the back end the hard work and to uh, have a tour of this property and just see the faces there they're, um, they've just completed the first phase of it, but very, very nice property. And uh, we were acknowledged for our partnership and collaboration in making it happen. And then the other thing I wanted to, a couple other things I wanted to mention, I wanted to thank those commissioners who were able, uh, Commissioner Brown, Commissioner Turner, and staff, 
um, we went to the annual United Way uh, women's luncheon uh, this last Saturday. Very nice outing, and commissioners, thank you all for attending. As well as uh, the Oboto Collective christened their new garden, and the Housing Authority was able to, through a uh, effort called Book Rich Environment, there are thousands of books that we donated to the Oboto Collective. And so it's just a very, very good time of contributing and, and being good partners. And then the last part of my uh, presentation, um, we, we, we talk about, and, and Rhonda mentioned it in her, her goodbye speech, the significance of landlords. You know, those, those little packets you made when you first started, but well, we've gone to a whole another level with that. And, uh, but you started with those packets. And I wanted to have Latoya come up and just give us an update on, um, on the progress we're making with the Landlord Partnership Program. Good afternoon, everyone. The Landlord Partnership and Program Incentives. The loss mitigation incentive is we give up to $2,500 to an eligible landlord for any damages that's beyond normal wear and tear with the commitment to rent to another HCV participant. The owner has 45 days to submit a claim to SNARA along with photos and receipts. As of April 15th, SNARA has paid out a total of $8,611 in loss mitigation. Vacancy loss. Vacancy loss provides up to one month to a landlord or owner while preparing excessive damage to the unit with the commitment, again, to rent to another rental assistance participant. As of April 15th, SNAR has paid out $4,301. My favorite incentive, the new unit bonus. We provide a $500 bonus for each unit added to the program that was never on our HCV program to um, a new landlord. As of April 15th, SNAR has paid out $17,000 and the new unit bonus. We have 34 new units and 22 new landlords. <laughs> SNARA, thank you. <laughs> SNARA now has a dedicated landlord liaison to assist landlords. This is my contact information, which is up here on the board, landlord liaison at snvrha.org. Thank you. Do you have any questions? I have a question. I'm not sure if you can answer it or Mr. Jordan can answer it, but we're, I get a lot of inquiries about whether we need a law that, that dis prohibits discrimination against people that have vouchers. Do you see that there's a lot of people that have vouchers that can't find a place to live? We did, but now it's getting better. I think um, we got a lot of more landlords that's con that wants to come onto our program. I'm in talks right now with a guy who's um, bought land who wants to build container homes and he wants to give those, he wants voucher holders on them to rent out those container homes too. So I think we're making a lot of progress in getting new landlords and landlords to um, become partners with us. And I just want to add to that, uh, Commissioner, um, I, I just have a, a theory that says that if we can incent people to understand how be, they can become a part of the solution, that oftentimes may be a better approach. Uh, I, I like to see, be it from you know the various jurisdictions, but I like to see more incentives that can be given to landlords who will rent to folks who have vouchers. And it could be incentives through our programs, uh, it can be through tax breaks, but just things that says that we have a lot of units here. I mean, we're a big rental community, and um, you know to the the points that Latoya was making in her first couple slides about loss mitigation and, uh, and vacancy loss, you know, those numbers prove or disprove this notion of who Section 8 voucher holders are. You know, when you look at the 12,500 vouchers that we have and, and as we cycle through, those are not big numbers when, particularly when we look and say the threshold is anything above wear and tear. So to the extent that we can continue to collaborate and find opportunities to incent and, and help landlords, uh, particularly monetarily, I think that might be an option we consider. Yeah. Great, thank you. I just have a question. 
Um, I know that in North Las Vegas, there has been more homes bought by, you know, corporate ent entities than anywhere else in the entire country. Through our vetting process, are we able to identify if it is like, as an example, a BlackRock who's buying, you know, thousands of units and then they would be able to utilize our subsidy to pay off, you know, their, their, you know, their, their investments? So we, we have not been able to dig into that aspect. I would like to. I like to sit down because if they're buying them, they're buying them. And to the extent that we can can use those those um, those purchases, if you will, for low income people. It's my understanding that as this corporate entity comes in, you know, they're they're not looking at people that, that really, really need housing from an affordability standpoint. They're looking and saying, I own this house and I'm gonna charge as much as I can. But that is something that we need to look into and we can we can and report back to you. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Latoya. And then finally, just want to bring everybody's attention to our monthly newsletter and uh, just highlighting some of the activities that we've had since we last got together. And Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you so much, Mr. Jordan. There's a lot of exciting things happening. Uh, thank you for your leadership. We'll now move on to section number three, uh, consent and ag agenda item number six. Uh, there are a motion for the approval of request to write off outsta outstanding tenant accounts, receivable or vacated accounts for the period ending February 29, 2024. Move to write off those accounts. All right, we have a motion by Vice Chair Sagerbloom. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Desmond. Is there any discussion? Hearing saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Thank you so much. Uh, we'll now move on to section number four. Uh, Director Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If we could ask for a moment of silence for the... Um, to acknowledge the deceased that folks we've lost since our last time together. Uh, James Chapman, David Boyd, Jimmy Littlefield, Edith Rakowski, Gertrude Glaspie, Francis Hamilton, Lloyd Batts, and Nancy Everelli. We'll keep these residents and their families in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you. Um, section number five, item number eight, approval to award contract number C24006 in the amount of $499,862.51 to T4 Construction LLC for the rehabilitation of three single family public housing homes. Okay, and we're going to have that presented by Frank Stafford. Good afternoon, Frank Stafford, Director of Development and Modernization. Item uh, eight, <coughs> approval to award contract number C24006 in the amount of $499,862.51 to T4 Construction LLC for the rehab of three single family scatter site, uh, single family public housing homes. The SNRHA Procurement Department conducted competitive se selection process, IFB number B24006 for a period of 120 days to procure a contractor to rehab three public housing single family homes located at 2239 Sabrosa Avenue, 2253 Sierra Sunrise Street, and 8133 Hydra Lane. The SNRHA Procurement Department used the online bidding service NGM to advertise this pro project. 637 firms received the bid, documents in two firms submitted timely proposals, Validity Construction Services, Inc., and T4 Construction, LLC. After review of both bids, T4 Construction was found to be the lowest responsive bid in the amount of $499,862.51. T4 Construction is an African-American and woman-owned company with Ms. Jacqueline Threat owning 100% of the company. 
This project is subject to Section 3 regulations pursuant to 24 CFR Part 135. T4 construction state they will comply with the requirements by hiring two eligible Section 3 employees. Ms. Threat or representatives present to answer any questions the board may have. Action request is the executive director requests the board to approve to award contract number C24006 to T4 Construction LLC in the amount of $499,862.51 for the rehab of three public housing single family homes. Does that complete your presentation? That completes my presentation. All right. Are there any uh, questions, comments? If there are none, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Move to approve. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Vice Chair Segerbloom. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Brown. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing seeing none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? We have a motion. We have, a motion. We have an extension by uh, abstention. Who's abstaining? Thought I heard an abstention. All right. No, but Chairman McCurdy, can you guys hear me? Yeah, you're just lagged, lagged a little bit. We can hear you loud and clear, though. So I've been seconding some things, and you, I don't think you can hear me. So. Yeah, there's a little bit of a break in the feed. Okay. But but thank you. Motion was adopted. Um, did we? I just wanted to let the record show that Councilwoman or Commissioner Bruni is here. Yes. All right. Uh, this is the time set aside for new business items. Are there any of the commissioners who would like to bring forward a new business item? All right, we'll close that. We'll now move on to the second portion of our agenda. This is the second time set aside for public comment. Uh, this public comment period is limited to anything. Uh, there are no limits, so uh, if you'd like to come forward at this time, we ask that you do limit your comments to three minutes. We have three comment cards here. Uh, we're gonna call up Madeline Rhodes. Hello, my name is Madeline Rhodes, and I'm 914 West McWilliams Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, commissioners and board, as well as residents online, as well as those inside of the seating area. <laughs> Excuse me. Commissioners, I stand before you exhausted and have exhausted all internal remedies to address blatant violations of my rights as a public housing resident for over a year. SNAR has, Ill um, has illegally calculated my rent based on income I actually do not receive. Also, like child support and other income payments that I have proven that I do not and have not received. This violates federal laws like 24 CFR 5.609 C14 and state regulations NRS 315.031. Uh, I have provided proof of income per the CFR and it has been ignored the evidence. Their grievance process has been um, unlawfully uh, and unbiased, as well as the hearing from an impartial uh, third party has been disregarded in violation to 24 CFR 966.56C in denying my rightful appeal in violation of 24 CFR 966.57. Commissioners, I am asking you, and I've also sent an email to all commissioners on the 3rd of April, the 5th of April, the March 25th, I've also sent out emails. I've constantly reached out to you guys on numerous occasions. I have now filed an official complaint with NAACP. I filed an official complaint with the HUD OIG investigation team. I have filed an official complaint with the regional office. And as the end of this conversation and meeting, I will be sending this certified letter to Washington, citing all the violations and as well as the evidence and proof that I've attempted to reach out to not only executive staff, but commissioner's board. I earnestly look forward to hearing from you sooner than later. Thank you. Uh, we'll now have Miss Bonnie Hughes come forward. Good 
really. I'm sorry, I've never done this. I have a lot of anxiety. Just go to the mic and state your name for the record. And my, na my name is Bonnie Hughes. And you can say anything you like. Um, I've just been on um, housing for almost 12 years, almost 13. Um, there was some communication. I had gone to the Flamingo office constantly bringing this information, trying to communicate. Um, the people at the desk were just disrespectful, like, we don't have time for you when you hear from us. That's when we'll let you know what's going on. Then I received a letter that I reached the top of the list for Patriot Place or Legion Stadium. It's um, close to my eight physicians that I see. My car is 24 years old, so it won't go to the north side of town for all my appointments. Um, and then, I, so I reached that top of the list that said a Legion or Patriot place. Again, I got the uh, approval letters for the um, emotional support dog and a ground floor unit because I can't climb steps. I've just complied by everything. And then I believe maybe it's a little less than a year, more than a year. I got something that said something about Bennett Plaza, but we need you to come back to the office. We need all this documentation all over again because we can't find it in your file. I'm like, it's been 12 years. I, I don't know what you've done with my file. Um, and I reached back out to find out about this Bennett Plaza, and they're like, well, now you just have to sit and wait. And I never heard back from anybody, period. I don't even know where Bennett Plaza is, probably in Northtown, which for me, I'm not able to live there. But you told me it would be Patriots Place or Allegiant Stadium, you, or Allegiant, Allegiant Apartments. You didn't never mention anything about Bennett Plaza. I'm 64 years old, I am disabled beyond belief, and nobody wants to help. When I was younger, I paid my debt to society. I did what was right, and you know, nobody wants to help. Thank you, and uh, for those of you who are coming up and who have issues, we ask that you stand, uh, stand by and let staff uh, come in, have a conversation with you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Lisa Papalardo. Papalardo. Papalardo, there it is. Um, I have been waiting for one place for seven years. Last year in July, I got selected. They said I would be getting a letter in the mail. Then two days later, I checked the portal. It says back on the list. I called them and they said, you're not selected. It was a glitch in the computer. So I'm just here to see if you could see, find out. I just want a date or how much longer it's going to take. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, is there anyone else wishing to come forward at this time for public comment? All right, this meeting is adjourned.